Chapter 4 A House Made of Thoughts There are satanic strongholds over countries and communities. There are strongholds which influence churches and individuals. Wherever a stronghold exists, it is demonically induced. It is a demonically induced pattern of thinking. Specifically, it is a house made of thoughts which has become a dwelling place for satanic activity. We're going to talk about five things in this chapter, one of them starting with a warning before deliverance, removing Satan's armor, taking every thought captive to Christ, defeat the stronghold of failure, and destroying the stronghold of fear. Let's start with a warning before deliverance. Now, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through waterless places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came, Matthew 12, 43 and 44. Although the nature of an unclean spirit is, by definition, spiritual and not physical, it still seeks a dwelling place, a house where it may rest. Jesus revealed that there is a dimension to human nature that actually can host an evil spirit and provide it a type of rest. If that is so, and it is, let us expose the nature of man and uncover that aspect in us which can become the constructional or the construction material within which a spirit might lodge. First, let us realize that a demon cannot dwell in a true Christian spirit. Through regeneration, the human spirit becomes the home of the Holy Spirit. Indeed, it is because the Holy Spirit is within us that we have discernment concerning the enemy's inroads. The aspect of human nature, which is most similar in substance and disposition to the nature of the evil one, is the carnal thought life, which is a dimension of the soul or personality of man. It is uniquely in our uncrucified thoughts and unsanctified attitudes that unclean spirits masking themselves as our thoughts and hiding themselves in our attitudes find access into our lives. Jesus continued and when the unclean spirit comes it finds its house unoccupied, swept and put in order then it goes and takes along with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself and they go in and live there and the last state of that man becomes worse than the first. Matthew 12, 44 and 45. If you are going to be successful in spiritual battle, your warfare must be waged according to the scriptures. For if you are ignorant of the necessity of bringing Christ into the delivered soul, there is the danger that the last state of that man might become worse than the first. Matthew 12, 45, 2 Peter 2, 20. Christ must enter and be allowed to build his house of righteousness in the very area where Satan once dwelt. Except in cases of physical affliction, deliverance should not be tempted for anyone unwilling to submit their thought life to Jesus Christ. Removing Satan's armor. When a strong man fully arms, when a strong man fully armed guards his own homestead, his possessions are undisturbed. But when someone stronger than he attacks him and overpowers him, he takes away from him all his armor upon which he had relied and distributes his plunder. Luke 11, 21 and 22. Before we were saved, you and I were the undisturbed possessions of the devil. Satan was like a fully armed strong man guarding the home 
instead of our souls. On the day of our salvation, however, a glorious someone stronger, the Lord Jesus Christ, attacked and overpowered Satan and stripped away his armor. Our born-again experiences may be widely varied on a natural level, but in the spirit realm, a very similar war was waged and won for each of us. If we could have seen into the invisible world, we would have observed the Holy Spirit working with the angels of God to destroy the enemy's first line of defense, his armor, see. What exactly was the armor that protected the devil and kept us from salvation? The armor upon which demons rely consists on our own thoughts, attitudes, and opinions which are in agreement with evil. See, what Jesus described as armor, the Apostle Paul classified as strongholds in 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 4. It is important to recognize that in speaking of strongholds, the Apostle is addressing the church. It is foolish to assume that our salvation experience has eliminated all the wrong ideas and attitudes, the strongholds which are still influencing our perceptions and behavior. They're still there. Yes, old things passed away and truly new things have come, but until we are walking in the fullness of Christ, we should not assume that the process of change is over. We will be identifying some of these strongholds later in this chapter. For now, let us say that on an individual level, the foundation of our continued success in warfare comes from yielding to the Lord as He reveals these strongholds and agreeing with Him through repentance in pulling them down. It is important to recognize that when we speak of strongholds, we are not talking about random thoughts or occasional sins. Rather, the strongholds that affect us most are those which are so hidden in our thinking patterns that we do not recognize them nor identify them as evil. We don't recognize them as evil. They are hidden, see. Remember in our initial text, Jesus revealed that unclean spirits are seeking rest. The sense of rest they seek originates from being in harmony with their environment. In other words, when our thought life is in agreement with unbelief, fear, or habitual sin, the enemy has rest. It is, it is significant that the process of deliverance quite often involves a season involves a season of inner conflict and turmoil. This is a good sign, signifying the individual's will, desires to be free. We should expect a time where we must exercise our authority in Christ as we resist the devil, 1 Peter 5, 9. Paul speaks of the struggle of the church against principalities and powers. There will be a period of fighting involved in the process of pulling down strongholds, for you are breaking your agreement with a foe who will fight to remain in your life. See, taking every thought captive to Christ. While we may find comfort in being Christians, being a Christian has not made us perfect. There are still many strongholds within us. Therefore, let us identify some of these spiritual fortresses. Rare is the Christian who is not limited by at least one of the following strongholds. Unbelief, cold love, fear, pride, unforgiveness, lust, greed, or any combination of these as well as the possibility of many others. Because we excuse ourselves so readily, it is difficult to discern the areas of oppression in our lives. After all, these are our thoughts, our attitudes, our perceptions. We justify and defend our thoughts with the same degree of intensity with which we justify and defend ourselves. As it is written, as a man thinketh, 
in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. In other words, the essence of who we are is in our thought life. Therefore, before any deliverance can truly be accomplished, we must honestly recognize and confess our need. We must stop pretending everything is all right. We must humble ourselves and seek help. Indeed, as previously mentioned, the first stronghold that God must remove is pride. For until one is willing to admit that he needs deliverance, he will never be free from strongholds. In order to recognize what is wrong with us, we must perceive God's standard of right. David in the height of ecstasy and Job in the pit of misery, as well as all of us in between, have asked the same old, same age old question, what is man? The writer of Hebrews asks, the same question, but then answers it under the inspiration of the Spirit. We do see him, namely Jesus, Hebrews 2.9. Jesus Christ is the model of what God considers typical for the new creation man, Ephesians 4.23 and 24. He is not just our Savior, he is the indwelling one who conforms us to his image, the firstborn of a family of glorious sons, Hebrews 2.10 and Romans 8.28 and 29. But let us also realize that only Jesus can be like Jesus. As we yield to him in increasing degrees of surrender, as we abide in him and his word abides in us, he brings forth life that is not simply like his own, but is his very own life. Christ himself living within us fulfills God's eternal purpose, which is to make man in his image. It is the coming forth in us of the presence of the Lord Jesus that makes the weapons of our warfare mighty, empowering our words with authority as we pull down strongholds. Therefore, you must learn to look objectively at any thoughts or attitudes that fail to conform to the likeness and teachings of Jesus. Those thoughts must be captured in wrong attitudes crucified. We must make way in us for the coming of the Lord. We must allow the increase of his government to expand until we are so absorbed into his spirit that we are not, we're not, we not only believe in him, we believe like him, his love, his thoughts, his desires must flow out from within us. Consequently, when we seek to identify and destroy demonic strongholds, the second fortress that must be annihilated is the stronghold of unbelief. It is this scheme of thinking that tells us Christ's likeness is impossible, which holds all further spiritual growth hostage. This lie and the chains it places around our hearts or upon our hearts must be stripped from our lives. Accordingly, take this moment and begin to pray in your spirit. Let the Holy Spirit rise and flood your heart. If you suffer from the stronghold which says you will never be like Christ, that stronghold can begin to come down right now. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I submit to you, I declare according to the word of God that because of your power to subject all things unto yourself, the weapons of my warfare are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. That's what 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 4 says. I repent for using the lie. I will never be like Jesus as an excuse to sin and compromise my convictions. In Jesus' name, I renounce my flawed, sinful old nature, and by the grace of God and the power of your spirit, I pull down the stronghold of unbelief that exists in my mind. Because of the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ, I am a new creation, and I believe that I will go from glory to glory, being continually transformed into Christ's image as I walk with God. In Jesus' name, amen. Defeat 
the stronghold of failure. Let us look at other strongholds that may be in your life and see their origin and more importantly how they can be removed. First remember that a stronghold is a house made of thoughts. Therefore, in regard to this type of warfare, Paul explained that our success is based upon taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Since our goal is to allow the Spirit of Christ full access into our souls, we must capture our thoughts and make them Christ slaves. To deal with the stronghold of failure, we must make repentance our way of life. Bear in mind also that repentance means change, not merely remorse. Our thinking must change. There are herds of erroneous thoughts roaming across our minds, grazing upon the ever-available hay and stubble of unbelief and failure. Thoughts like, I will always be a failure. I am just a sinner or I've tried walking in the spirit, but it didn't work. Converge and form the walls, floor and ceiling, the building materials of the stronghold of failure. To, to secure victory, you must capture these wrong thoughts. Capture the thought, I am a failure. Repent of it, asking God to forgive you of, of, of your unbelief. Let your mind be renewed by the word of God, which states, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Even though you have failed and will probably fail again in the future now because God is in your life, you can confidently proclaim, though I was a failure, my sufficiency comes from God, not myself. I am fully able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Arrest the thought I am just a sinner. Replace it with the confession of your faith which says, Though I was a sinner, now I am a beloved child of God, and though I occasionally still sin, the blood of Christ cleanses me of all unrighteousness, 1 John 1, 9. Because of the blood, Christ's sacrifice makes each of us as pure as he himself is. You are tearing down a stronghold of defeat that once oppressed you, and you are beginning to replace it with the godly stronghold of faith, which is built upon the word of God. With the old stronghold exposed and the thought patterns of defeatism coming down, you are destroying the stronghold of failure in your life. As you continue being renewed in the spirit of your mind by the word of God, you will begin walking in tremendous power and peace. You will enter the godly stronghold of faith. Let it be established in your attitudes that the goal and purpose of your salvation is that you be conformed to the likeness of Christ. Is it not written, whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren? Romans 8, 29. The same Lord who conquered the devil and liberated your heart in salvation is working still to renew your mind. While it is true that he is our promised land, it is also true that we are his promised land. The giants within our hearts, though they have withstood and humbled us, shall not withstand him. He is the eternal Joshua the Holy One who knows no defeat. As long as we recognize that our salvation is a continual transformation and that we are changing from glory to glory into the image of Christ, we should not be discouraged by the strongholds we discover, nor will occasional or momentary setbacks render us impotent. Listen. As we see our need, we rejoice in knowing it is only a matter of time before another giant is removed. Destroying the stronghold of fear. Another stronghold that oppresses men is fear. Your experience tells you if you try something new, especially in front of people, you may be embarrassed and rejected. To counter this, a whole series of reactions emerges in your mind. You sit back when you should step forward. You are silent, 
moment when you should be speaking, that silent, fearful withdrawal into yourself has become a house made of thoughts wherein dwells a spirit of fear. God does not want you in bondage. Therefore, let us look at some of the thoughts and experiences that may have formed the structure of this demonic fortress. Perhaps as a young child, when you tempted something new, the reaction among, listen, the reaction among your family or friends was ridicule. Their thoughtless words went so deep that in recalling from the pain, in recalling from the pain, you have involuntarily remained in the recoil or withdrawn position. Since then, you have refused to place yourself in situations where you can become vulnerable to criticism. You may not even remember the incidents, but you have not stopped recalling even until today. Remember Jesus said the Father would forgive us as we forgave others. As unjust as it may seem, your reaction to what hurt you was as far from the will of God as the actions were of, the, of those who hurt you. In fact, your reaction has actually become a part of your nature. You can be delivered from that oppression on your soul by releasing and forgiving those who hurt you to the degree that you truly let the incident go and forgive the offender. To that same degree, God will restore your soul to a balanced and healthy attitude toward people. As you increase in this process of forgiveness, you will grow in love. And as the scripture says, there is no fear in love. Love cast out fear. 1 John 4, 18. The stronghold of fear will be replaced by the stronghold of love. Always remember that victory begins with the name of Jesus on our lips, but it will not be consumed are consummated, excuse me, until the nature of Jesus is in our hearts. Victory begins with the name of Jesus on our lips, but it will not be consummated until the nature of Jesus is in our hearts. It is not enough to have your house swept and put in order. Matthew 12, 43. It is not enough to have your house swept and put in order. Your thought life must be occupied by the person of Christ. But as you persist in yielding yourself to Christ, he will restore, he will remove Satan's armor from your mind. He will show you what you need to bring down. You will see that the weapons of your warfare are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds.